Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another Booklist video. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we're here to talk about my biggest surprise reads of 2023. <laughs> So the books that I'm going to be featuring in today's video are all books that took me by surprise in some way. So maybe I went into them with little or no expectations and they completely blew me away. Or maybe I was very trepidatious about reading them because I didn't know if I was going to like them and then I absolutely loved them. So today we're primarily talking about positive surprises. I do have some surprise disappointments from the year, but I think I'm going to include those in the worst books of the year video just because I don't have enough worst books and I don't have enough disappointing books to make an entire video for each one. So I think I'm going to combine them into one. So for now, we're just going to talk about the positive surprises. I will say that if you've been around my channel for the past few months, really none of these are going to be a surprise to you because I have been talking about them frequently. Some of these you may actually be seeing in another future video soon, perhaps maybe my best books of the year video. All of the books in this video have one thing in common that I had no idea I was going to love them as much as I did. Now, because I've talked about a lot of these books in depth over several videos, I'm going to try to keep this fairly brief and just kind of give you an idea of what the book is and what I loved about it. So so let's go ahead and talk about the books. I'm talking about these in absolutely no order. I just wrote them down as I thought about them. And so that's how I'm going to discuss them today. The very first book that I have is Starling House by Alexi Harrow. This is probably one of the most recent books that made its way onto this list. And again, this is one that's been featured in multiple videos recently, but I was absolutely just caught off guard by how much I loved the story, considering I had no idea if I was going to even like it at all. But when this one came out, I was just loving the vibes of it so much that I knew I had to give it a chance. And it was almost perfect for me. It was absolutely stunning and I enjoyed it so much more than I thought that I would. And now I absolutely want to go back and read those other releases by her just because of how much this blew me away. So this follows our main character, Opal. She lives in small town eating Kentucky, which is a dying place. Nobody wants to be there. Nobody wants to live there. Nobody wants to visit there. And she is desperate to get her younger brother Jasper out. She has been his caretaker for several years ever since their mom passed away. So she feels entirely responsible for him and she's going to do whatever she can to get him out. Eating Kentucky is really not known for anything, but they do have the notable Starling House. This was built by an eccentric woman named E. Starling, who was pretty much known for a children's story that she wrote and that became wildly famous after she went missing. Nobody knows what actually happened to E. Starling, but they do know that she built this very elaborate house that was just as eccentric as she was. They have no idea why she did this and they have no idea where she went. But Starling House is something that Opal has actually been fascinated with for her entire life. And she has actually been dreaming about it for the past several years and she doesn't know why, but she feels a connection to this house and she actually passes by it every single day on her way home from work and one day she's passing by and she gets to meet Arthur Starling who is the current resident and ward of Starling House. They strike up a conversation and Arthur unexpectedly asks Opal to come in and be the housekeeper for Starling House because he's not taking care of it. It is falling apart. The house needs some love and care and so he offers Opal a lot of money to come do this. Now obviously she's skeptical. She has no idea why this man she's never met is offering her a position that's going to be paying her much more than she's making now but she's not in a position to refuse. So she does take this job. She comes in and she's starts fixing Starling House up and Starling House wants her there and Starling House is going to do whatever it can to keep her there. So obviously you can tell that Starling House is kind of a sentient house, right? It is definitely its own character within this story and you're following her as she's getting to know Starling House. She understands it and its eccentricities. She knows that it's not a normal house and she starts to learn its history, why it was actually built. And of course, there's a beautiful love story that develops between her and Arthur, which I absolutely loved. And of course, the magical realism vibes in this were absolutely immaculate. I just loved the overall story of this. The only reason why this wasn't like a full five stars is because once you get further into the story and you realize the history of Starling House, it definitely dives more deeply into the fairy tale-esque, which is not something that I tend to like or connect to. It did lose me a little bit. I was disconnected from that portion of the story, but overall I still really enjoyed almost everything about this and I was very, very pleasantly surprised and I highly recommend, especially if you love magical realism, if you have enjoyed Alexi Hero in the past, you cannot go wrong with this one because I thought this was absolutely wonderful. Kind of along the same lines, I'll go ahead and touch upon Wayward by Amelia Hart. After I read this, I described this book as a balm to my soul and I couldn't describe it any better than that. I don't know if this book just found me at the right place and the right time, but all I know is that after I read this book, I just fell in love with reading all over again. And that was not my expectation of this whatsoever. I had no idea what I was getting into going into this story. I just knew that there was going to be witchy vibes. I loved the cover of this story. I loved the idea of a multi-generational story of women. And so that's what I was expecting when I went into this 
this and it just completely took my breath away. So this follows three specific women over vastly different time periods. So you're following one in the 1600s during like the witch trials, you're following another one in the early 1900s, and then you're following one in present day. Now the stories themselves do not really directly connect. Their main connection is that they are all from kind of the same family line. And this family line has a deep connection to nature. They have a deep respect for it. They can kind of manipulate it and can control it in some ways. So that is what really connects them. And you're following them and their individual stories. And primarily what this is about is what women have to endure at the hands of men and how they go on to thrive and survive and how powerful women can actually be when they work together. So that I feel like was the ultimate message of the story. This is what I would describe as like a soft magical realism, like a soft witchy vibe. I didn't feel like it was too loud. That's not the word that I'm looking for, but I can't think of the word that I'm looking for. I just felt like this was overall the perfect soft touch of magic, especially because it really is just a deep rooted connection with nature. I just absolutely adored each wayward woman and their courage and determination to do what needed to be done. I'm a character driven reader, so I absolutely loved the focus on each character and I was invested in each one and I just wanted to know how it ended. So obviously I love this book so much. I gave it a 4.5, but now that I'm looking back on it, I honestly don't know why I didn't give it a five stars. Maybe because it wasn't necessarily super emotional for me. I don't know. All I know is that this was absolutely stunning. This book deserves that word. This book was stunning and I cannot recommend it enough. Okay, switching gears for a little bit, I do want to talk about Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. So this is my very first experience with Jillian McAllister and I really didn't know what to expect. I did know that this was going to play around with time a little bit and those stories don't always work for me. So this is one that I went into a little bit cautiously, but I ended up being very pleasantly surprised and invested in the story. So this follows our main character Jen and one night she is up late waiting for her son because her son is late. He has passed curfew and she's worried about him. As she sees him walking down the street she's obviously very relieved but that relief soon dissipates as she watches her kind sweet son stab a man that she doesn't know. And obviously this sends her and her entire family into turmoil. She has no idea why her son did this. She has no idea who this man was and she's just trying to figure out what is going on. And when she wakes up the next day she realizes that it's not actually the day after this murder has taken place. This hasn't actually happened. It is the day before. Obviously, she's very confused. She doesn't understand, but soon she finds herself going backwards in time. First, it's just day by day by day. Then it's by weeks, then by months, and then sometimes years. And the whole purpose of this is taking her back to very pivotal moments in her life where she missed something and she needs to really pay attention to try to figure out what exactly is happening. And I just really enjoyed how Jillian McAllister used time travel to kind of solve a murder before it actually happened. Usually, fast paced stories like this don't necessarily work for me just because I, like I said, before I'm a character driven reader and so plot based stories usually don't suck me in or get me connected. And while I can't necessarily say I was emotionally connected to these characters, I was invested and I wanted to see what was going to happen because this is about a woman saving her family. And I do believe that Jillian McAllister did a great job of balancing plot with characters. So I did get enough of the characters to make it feel a little bit more substantial than it otherwise would have. Now if you're going into this expecting like a Blake Crouch level of sci-fi, you're going to be very disappointed. This doesn't like deal heavily with the mechanics of time travel. This is literally a about a woman who experienced an event so traumatic that it was enough to be the catalyst to this very strange time phenomenon. And I just ultimately really, really enjoyed what she was able to do with this. This one certainly put Jillian McAllister on my radar and I'm excited to read more from her in the future. Another thriller that really caught me off guard, The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. Now, of course, this book is absolutely everywhere. This book is getting so much hype. And so when a book gets so much hype, I go in very cautiously, especially with thrillers because I've been reading them for so long. I've been reading thrillers for my entire life and it takes a lot for a thriller to get me invested, intrigued, connected, engaged, a thriller really has to do a whole heck of a lot in order to get me to those stages. And The Housemaid absolutely did that. I had no idea I was going to love this book as much as I did. So this follows our main character, Millie, and she has actually just been released from prison and she is currently looking for a job. And she actually applies to be a housemaid for this very upscale wealthy family. Now she doesn't think for a second that she has a chance of getting this job because of her background. So she is very surprised when she's actually offered the job. And she's even more surprised when she finds out it's a live-in position because she's actually been living in her car. So she's going to have a nice room in this beautiful home and she is going to be a housemaid. But of course, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is because Nina Winchester, who is the mom of the family, it is her, her husband, and their daughter. Millie soon starts to realize that Nina is pretty unstable. Like she is very erratic. She'll tell Millie to do something and forget that she told Millie to do something. And so she'll yell at Millie when she actually does it saying, no, I never told you to do that. Or kind of vice versa. She'll say that she told Millie to do something when she never did. And then she'll yell at Millie for that. So it is a very very kind of like a bipolar environment. She has no idea what is going on with Nina. She'll be yelled at for absolutely no reason, but she's willing to stick through all of this because like I said, it's a cush job and she's even more willing to stick by it because she starts connecting with Nina's husband. And then of course that relationship starts to 
develop. And I don't want to say anything more than that because I think from that point on is when things get really interesting, really complicated. And Millie starts to realize that things are not what they seem. This book absolutely took me for a ride and I was absolutely not expecting it to go in the direction that it did. What I really loved about this was the ending. If you read this book, you probably know what I'm talking about, but the reveal and kind of understanding how all of it played out was very fascinating to me. And it very much left this open to more adventures from Millie. And obviously there have been because The Housemaid's Secret is already out and there's a new one coming out in 2024. So Millie is definitely going to have more adventures in the future. And I'm excited about them because I just love the way that this ended. So this is another big surprise for me. I was not expecting to fall in love with this the way that I did. And I'm really hoping that The Housemaid's Secret lives up to this one. Next, I have The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I adored this so much. It is a book club full of a handful of kind of housewives and what happens when a vampire moves into their neighborhood and what they're going to do to combat it. This book was actually a lot of things. It is obviously a horror novel, but it's also a story about friendship. It's also kind of an ode to housewives and stay-at-home moms. This book was definitely feminist in a lot of ways, which I was not expecting going into that. There was definitely a lot of feminist messages going on in this story. And there was also a lot of focus on female strength and autonomy, which I really appreciated. What Grady Hendrix did with the story was he took a bunch of Southern housewives that were united by their love of true crime and suspense thrillers, and he turned them into badass fans vampire hunters and I absolutely loved that. I adored the story so much. This book definitely contains Brady Hendrix's iconic mix of horror with a sense of lightness and comedic relief. He just has a wonderful way of blending those two things together. There are definitely some funny, wacky, insane moments in here and definitely moments of lightheartedness. There were also a lot of serious things that were happening in this story. Very heavy topics that were covered and I just love the way that he's able to blend all of that together. This was certainly a gem and I'm very much hyped to read more from Grady Hendrix in the future. Now this next one truly came out of left field. I was absolutely stunned by how much I loved this story, My Dear Hamilton by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy. So this is what I would call a biological historical fiction. It is written in the first person perspective of Eliza Hamilton as though she is telling her own story. Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy were able to complete such a stunningly detailed and comprehensive novel that beautifully told the story of such a remarkable woman. And she dealt with so much grief, loss, and betrayal with such dignity, grace, and strength. I absolutely absolutely fell in love with Eliza Hamilton in this story. And back by the end of the story, I was absolutely bereft that I was never going to know Eliza Hamilton. I love that they were able to tell Eliza Hamilton's story because we all know the story of Hamilton and we understand his impact on our country even still to this day. But we do not often hear of Eliza Hamilton's own contributions to the founding of this country and all of the things that she had to endure and just what it meant to be married to a man like Hamilton who had never ending ambition, where it was never enough. He could never be successful or important or famous enough basically. He was trying to overcome a childhood of shame and he really just wanted to be well known and he wanted to be great and important and he wanted to go down in history, which he certainly did. So you're seeing Hamilton through Eliza's eyes, what their marriage was like, everything that she had to endure. And it was just absolutely stunning. It was beautifully written. I had no idea that this book was going to be almost 700 pages when I went into it. But even still, it never felt that long to me. I was completely immersed in the world of Eliza Hamilton and I honestly did not want it to end. And like I said, once I finished this, I was completely bereft that I would never know Eliza Hamilton. And she's truly just an American hero to me now, for sure. This is another one that completely came out of left field. I had no expectations going into it. I just knew that it was probably going to be a very character-driven novel. And of course, that's my jam. And I liked the premise of it because it follows a profession that you do not normally see talked about. The Collective Regrets of Clover by Mickey Bramer. As you can tell, this follows our titular character, Clover, and she is actually a death doula. And she was inspired to become a death doula because her beloved grandfather, who basically raised her after her parents died when she was very, very young, ended up dying himself alone in his office on a university campus while she was a across the world traveling and she never forgave herself for that and she determined that she was never going to let somebody die alone again and so she's basically there to help usher people into death with dignity and she considers it a great honor to hear their last words their last pieces of advice any regrets that they may have and she vows never to forget these people and the last words that they spoke but amidst all of this even though Clover is obviously a very caring and empathetic person she never has really gone out and lived her own life she still lives in the same apartment that she lived with her grandfather she really has no friends. She's never been in a relationship. She's never fallen in love. She's never been kissed. So she's very much living a stinted life. And this story really is about her living her life and finding friends and finding love and finding all of the things that she's been missing. And I just felt like this was a phenomenal, worthwhile story. I absolutely fell in love with Clover and her journey. And I wanted to see her find happiness. And of course, this is a story where you're not going to be able to help but think about death and your own regrets. It makes you think about life and how you're currently living it. It also takes a hard 
look about how we as Americans view death and how we kind of avoid it at all costs and we don't talk about it. Whereas in other cultures, it's very different and it's kind of respected and it's not feared as much as it is here. Clover kind of makes us realize that death shouldn't be a shameful topic. It's something that we all are going to have to face and we all have faced already in some shape or form. And it, like I said, it's the one thing that we have in common. It's the one thing that binds us. It's the one thing that we're all going to be able to share someday. This was absolutely beautiful and poignant. I highly feel like it's worth the read, especially if you like more character driven stories, but I just felt like this was phenomenal and I highly recommend. Hi friends, editing Brittany here. So I got done filming the biggest surprises of 2023 video and a couple hours later it hit me that there was a book that I meant to include that I accidentally left out and I couldn't believe that I did it because it was by far one of the biggest surprises. And by biggest, I mean biggest. And I'm talking about Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I decided to impulsively start this story because for some reason I was just itching to dive into a huge, epic, dense fantasy. And this certainly fit the bill. But I was a little bit nervous because I hadn't loved Brandon Sanderson up until this point. I'd read the first two books in the Mistborn series and they didn't blow me away. But at the same time, I think I did a disservice to them because I didn't immersively read them like I did with this one. And this took me about two months to read. It is just over a thousand pages. You can see that I tapped the hell out of this and I absolutely loved it. It was a phenomenal reading experience. Yes, it was definitely slow. It was tedious at some points, but I still just took my time and I enjoyed the journey. And I kind of read this and read the wiki that goes along with it. I kind of studied when I was reading this because I wanted to get the most out of my experience with the story. I'm a person that loves a lot of context before diving into a fantasy world, but Brandon Sanderson likes to trickle things in and I'm not like that. I want a big info dump, especially with a world that is as complicated as this one. I felt like there was a lot of stuff that I was missing and that I wouldn't have been able to understand or fully enjoy this book without having a little bit of context to it. So I did scour the wiki for this. I took a lot of notes. I tabbed important things as they came up. I just basically studied the heck out of this book and it made the reading experience with this all that more enjoyable. I had no idea I was going to love this as much as I did, especially for such an intimidating story. This is by far one of the biggest books that I've ever read and I think the other books in the series just get longer and longer and longer, but I'm going to dive into them without fear. So I had to include this book in my biggest surprises of 2023 video because it absolutely was a surprise. Starting it was a surprise, finishing it was a surprise, loving it was a surprise. The whole experience was a surprise. So I'm so glad that I started this one and that I loved it and I will absolutely be continuing with it just as soon as I'm able to. All right, then last but certainly not least, this is actually a book that I've mentioned multiple times as being one of the biggest surprises of the year. So of course I had to include it in this video, The Sweet Spot by Amy Popol. So earlier this year, I did a video comparing Aardvark Book Club to Book of the Month. And in order to do that, I actually had to subscribe to Aardvark. And so the very first month that I had to select a book, I wanted absolutely nothing. This was the only one that seemed like it could be remotely close to something that I would want to read. But this is definitely more like contemporary-ish, but it's not like a romance. So this is, I hate to use the term chiclet, but that's the best way that I could describe this. So that's not necessarily something that I typically gravitate towards. So I went into this really nervous, thinking I wasn't going to like this. And I absolutely adored this. I think that this could best be described as a comedy of errors because it follows three women who before really didn't know each other at all. They end up being connected because of the actions of another woman. So these three all end up unexpectedly connected and helping a baby that is randomly placed on their doorstep. It is actually the baby of this woman that winds up in their care accidentally and they all have to come together and help take care of this baby. And this is just a book that contains such a wacky cast of characters who are absolutely phenomenal. And you get to know each of these women and love them and they start to form a very strong but unlikely friendship. And like I said, I was very hesitant about it, but it ended up gripping me from the very beginning. It took me on this madcap journey full of zany characters that you cannot help but love. And this was such a good read and I truly, truly enjoyed it. So if you are looking for a lighthearted read, a little bit of a palate cleanser, I highly, highly recommend this story. All right, everybody. And that is it. Those are some of the biggest surprise reads that I've had in 2023. Now, of course, the year is not over. There is still definitely a possibility for some other reads to surprise me. But as of now, these are the top that I currently have on the list. Please comment down below and let me know what some of your biggest surprises were for 2023. I would love to know. Or if you've made it to this video and you're not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me a lollipop or candy emoji in honor of the sweet spot. I absolutely love seeing your comments down below. I love the engagement and it helps me and my channel so very much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I am participating in Book Miss, meaning from December 1st through December 25th. You should see one video upload from me a day if I'm successful. And if you don't want to miss out on any of that content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I love connecting with you in any of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.